I want to walk you through the exact template that I use on stage with the seven time Grammy award winning artists that I work with, uh, show you every feature that there is in it, talk about why it's there. Um, and then talk about how you can create a similar template or why you may want to potentially change things, alter things. Uh, let's dive in and get started. So, uh, I'm working with what I call my playback pro template for every scenario. Um, and every artist I work with, um, I often end up tweaking and changing a few things. One thing that certainly changes is I'll change my return track groupings and routings. Maybe we'll have more outputs, we'll have less outputs. I think right now we use like 24 outputs, uh, a Dante bass rig. But even if I'm using an analog Play Audio 1U uh, type rig, I think about, okay, what are my return track groupings gonna be? And I set those up. So in this particular case, the starting point for me, drums, loops, bass, guitars, piano keys, pad synth, uh, effects, impacts, BGVs, aux, monitor mix, tone, LTC render left, LTC render right. We'll talk about what those are in a moment. The, that's kind of my starting place for my return tracks. And I may tweak and change my routings, uh, but that's at least what I start with. And I use return tracks. I did a separate tutorial about why I use return tracks, and I've talked about this ad nauseum for 10 plus years. So find that, watch that particular tutorial. But Return tracks have been really helpful for, for me. Now my, uh, again, return track to output routings will change based on the scenario, so I don't wanna deal too much with that. But let's dive into what I call the global programming tracks um, and walk through what each of those are and why they're there, kind of how I use them. So starting up at the top here, this is, uh, I call my song track. This is a MIDI track. Um, man, this is such a simple thing, but it's been really, really beneficial and helpful. I'll actually open up a set when we're done with this and I'll walk you through all of these. But so stick around for that, you'll see it in action. But this is a MIDI track. The, the way I use this is I create a MIDI clip for an entire song. Uh, it allows me to put the song name there, maybe add a note like double chorus up top. Uh, it's really helpful and beneficial. One, it allows me to click that and select the entire length of the song. It allows me to hover my mouse or click my mouse over to the right hand side of that. And you can see down at the bottom here, I'll, I'll do that again, but if you look down at the bottom there, you'll see it says uh, four minutes, 15 seconds, gives me the exact length of the song, which is great. Uh, this has just been really, really helpful as a utility. It's just a MIDI track, MIDI clip, very simple. Sections, gosh, I've been doing this for like 15 plus years, right? So if you see an Ableton set that uses a markers track, uh, you're welcome. Uh, but I now call it sections all because of Ableset and because a lot of my students use Ableset. Ableset's a fantastic set list management solution. Um, and so I just ended up naming it sections to, to solve things for people when they use my playback pro template. Uh, it's really similar to the songs track. Uh, it's a MIDI clip within a MIDI track. And what you do is you go through and split this up, command E, and you uh, maybe rename this to something like intro, right? And then command R, verse and then split this course, and it saves your song sections uh, with your song. So I do this uh, programming piece at the song level, and it carries over with the songs. And this is really beneficial for a couple of reasons. One, it allows me to see the song sections of my song. It gives me a map to follow, which is really helpful and beneficial. Two, it allows me to edit really quickly. For example, if I get this back, hey, Will, can we double the verse? Yeah, click verse, command shift D, it's doubled, right? Ain't nobody can work faster than that, right? It's unbelievable. Um, I hear a lot of people go, well, Will, is it worth me doing this if we're never gonna repeat something? I just showed you a great reason why to do it. It's confidence, it's clarity, uh, just do it. Just trust me on that. 20 plus years of experience, just trust me, do it. And if you don't like it, go back. Tempo track, um, that's one I've talked many, many years about, but it allows me to save the tempo of my song with an audio clip. So it's an audio track, and if I go over to my template over in the browser here, uh, and expand, click the arrow to the left of this. You can see within the tempo track, I have a lot of different tempos. I typically just grab the first one here, 50 BPM, drag this in, and I change the tempo to be whatever I need it to be. I do this at the song level um, because the tempo is saved with it and it allows me to customize it really easily and quickly. So I can go down here and say, for example, let's make this 100 BPM, change from follow to lead. Uh, I do have to go in and change, rename the clip, so there's probably a reason why I should use the actual 100 BPM one. But then I drag that out, and that audio clip is what sets Ableton's tempo. So if you look in the upper left-hand corner here, it says 78. If I press stop and press play again, you'll see 100 BPM, it set that tempo. And that's saved with the song, drags in, I don't have to reset my tempo, and um, I can add my tempo, uh, I can build sets faster than anyone else, and I can customize my tempo faster than anyone else because of that, which is great. Click. This is uh, a big one for me. I use Foundations for Live, which is a click that I built 
uh, a long time ago. Uh, I think we're on version three of this now. It has multiple uh, subdivisions. I can adjust the levels, fourths, eighths, sixteenths. Uh, uh, the new version has triplets. If you are into that sort of thing, no, no judgment. Uh, click type, you can choose between 17 different clicks. You can do a custom click as well if you want to. Um, but it's, it's the way that I manage click. One, subdivisions have been huge. Two, it allows me to program my song and then decide what clicks on I want uh, later. For example, the artists I, and band I currently work with, I programmed all our songs and then they said, hey, this is a click sound we want. I just went and replaced that once in my set and then updated across all my songs. It's been beneficial and helpful for me. Some people, when I show this, they get like really weirded out about CPU of many things. And I always tell them, well, one, I've never once had an issue related to Ableton that was caused by foundations. The CPU hit on your set is maybe one, 2%. Test it and try it. Um, if you're really bothered by it, when uh, you program, just freeze your track so it freezes in place and it's an audio track and any CPU hit you are getting, you'll no longer get. Um, but I like having it. I like having the flexibility in the moment to say, hey, can we uh, get eighth notes on this song? Can we remove eighth notes on that song? Really helpful. Similar thing with the AI cues player here. This is the cues player I created, I think five years ago. It's created using AIQ voices. And so um, this is really helpful for me because I can go in similar to uh, what I did. I guess I should have showed you this with Click too. Psh, reverse, back up. Uh, with Click, for example, the way this works is I just drag in a Click track here. Uh, we'll do 4-4. Four, four. This runs the entire length of it. Tempo is defined by the tempo track. The click sound is defined by the click. So there's my quarters, there's my eights, right? You can add that in. I can change my click type, boss db1 if you want it, if that's your sort of thing. That's click. Now, cues. Meanwhile, back to the ranch. Uh, cues, I can go in, and I have a lot of pre-built uh, things for me to use. So I can say, okay, let's get a, uh, a count in. One, two, three, four. Right? Um, that's really helpful to keep everyone on the same page. But then I can also go in and say, okay, let's get uh, like our verse for this. Um, maybe we want verse one, two, three, four. Instead of recording this from scratch and recording every single time, or hopefully you don't do that. If you're gonna record, record it once and save it. But what it allows me to do is drop the cue in. Verse two, three, four. Right. It, it's huge. It's a, it's a big time saver. Uh, next, kind of similar uh, vein to cues is um, song title slate. And so I've started adding in slates or the title of the song at the beginning of the song. Uh, and that's just an audio track. And the way that I do that is I go to cues.fromstudiotostage.com. Uh, let me just show you that. Oh, hey there, fancy seeing you here. So uh, cues.fromstudiotostage.com. Uh, I'm gonna choose voice one because that's the voice that I'm using uh, in the cues player. Then I'm gonna go down here and we're gonna call this song um, Never gonna give you up we'll generate audio uh, i could preview the audio never gonna give you up great if you want to adjust kind of the timbre from the random ups and downs because it's ai you can click regenerate that's fine for me close enough for government work hit download wave and then i can drag this in uh directly into my ableton set it's a wave file works perfectly well uh, pro tip, when I'm working with these, what I'll do is I'll zoom in and I'll trim just the beginning of this, boom, just like that, move it over, uh, and then we get... One, never gonna give two, you up. No, three. that is pure chaos. That's way too much for me. Another pro tip for me is I typically will trim out whatever uh, part of the count is blocked by the slate. See if this makes sense. So I'm doing one, two. I probably would split this like here. Uh, let's do quarter notes. Let's split this. Take that out. So we hear. Never gonna give you up. Three, four. Right. That works for me. Whatever you wanna do, uh, you do you. Okay. Uh, next thing is LTC. This is a big one for me. Uh, almost every production, well, basically, yeah, every production I work with, every song we do has an LTC file. So I head to ltc.fromstudiostage.com. Oh, fancy seeing you there. It's already pulled up. And I choose my frame rate, my sample rate, my starting point, maybe the first song is hour 10 for whatever reason. And I click download LTC uh, and I load that into my Ableton set. What's cool about this is um, it works offline, which means I don't have to be on, on the internet to do this. I can actually download this as an offline app uh, if you're using Chrome and I could drop this right into my Ableton set. This is a audio file. And despite the fact it doesn't look like it wants to load right now in Ableton, it does function very, very well. 
Uh, if you see this, I've found it's better just to go to downloads and not try to speed up to get through your video by dragging from the download video, uh, download pop-up window that I did. So uh, there we go. It's dropping. It's going. Um, we'll give it a second to load in or not. It's just going to be stubborn because it's getting late. It's getting dark outside. It's getting cold. The bats will be out soon, so i better hurry up. So let me pause this, and we'll get this LTC, LTC file to actually drop in place. All right, after much swearing, we were able to get that audio file to drop into place. Um, but the LTC file, uh, LTC track is an audio track. I generate that LTC file, which is an audio track, and drop that into place. Uh, and, and that's really helpful and beneficial. Uh, now, the next one is LTC render. I've talked about this in a separate video, but what this allows me to do is really quickly create LTC renders of songs. And so uh, I can basically say um, my left side of the render is going to be click cues tracks. The right side of my render is just LTC. This is all pre set up in the template by default. Uh, I've got a separate video showing you how to do that uh, if you want to see it. Um, but it allows me to just go up, click my song track render all in one place, and it's it's been life saving. Next one is a reference track. That's an audio track. That's helpful to have a uh, board tape, a two track. Uh, I call it a reference track of the song you're doing so you can reference it. Go figure. What a great name. Uh, but it's, hey, here's how we played this. Everyone's on the same page. Um, it's locked into the grid. It's in time with everything else. It's been really helpful for me. A big one for me, particularly when working with an artist, is the artist isn't always going to be there, particularly at rehearsals. And so in those moments, it's really great to have a reference vocal. I have the privilege of typically I have the original stems from the original record from uh, you know how the artist played it. So I can just drop in his lead vocal track into that reference vocal. It's synced to the grid. And it's just helpful when we rehearse. We just unmute reference vocal and it's there. It's going to a specific output that's just for that. It, it's been really, really helpful to keep rehearsals going. And even with cues, I don't know if you've experienced this. Um, a lot of times people still get lost. Like, well, what's that part? Which verse is this? Um, having that reference vocal in there has been really, really great. Final one here is a 911 vocal. Depending on the level of act you're working with depends on if you need this or not. Um, and I will say, I've, thankfully, I've never worked with a band or artist that fakes their vocal live. What's the difference between lip syncing and a 911 vocal? One, if you have a problem with this, just delete it from the template. Like, don't come at me, Felicia. I don't need to hear that right now. Um, but 911 vocal is basically there in case of emergency in case the artist loses their voice. Or there's a particular song where um, there's, there's one part where uh, there's an artist I worked with that they had one song where the, the vocal just hit really, really quickly and the vocal had to be like super, super tight. And so for that particular verse, uh, and it was actually kind of affected as well too, like an overdriven thing. So for that particular song, for that particular verse, the front of house audio engineer would just bring out 911 vocal for that particular part. And that would go, the singer's still singing, and then they would fade it out, go back to the chorus. If you think that's faking, don't use it. Just think about the context in which this is typically used, which is stadium shows where there's millions of dollars online, a lot of people's jobs online, a lot of people's families uh, being provided for. And the 911 vocal is there just in case of emergency. Most people I work with use it very sparingly. Again, they don't lip sync. And I'm grateful I've never worked with an artist that does. Uh, I have friends that work with artists that every single song they lip sync, no judgment here, man. If the check clears, God bless you, right? But that's a look at my template. Um, let me show you, I promise this. Let's open up, uh, let's actually open up a set that I use to build this template um, uh, just so you can kind of see this in context because the process I use is I create my template. This is my playback pro template. And then I open up an individual song and I program that song using my template. And then I reopen my template and I create a, a set of my program songs based off that template. And so here's what a, a fully programmed set looks like. You can see a couple things I've done. Each song is, is color coded, so it's really easy to see. You can see all those sections there. I typically actually don't use locators. I, I uh, use this for, we were doing an accelerator and I had Able set automatically add locators in there. So I typically don't use locators like this because this clutters things for me. But um, this is what the set looks like. It's really easy to see. It's really easy to navigate. Uh, I can build this set almost instantly. It's, it's super quick. So that's the template I use. I, I'd love to know what you like about that, what you would change, what you have in your template that I didn't have here. Uh, and thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.